Welcome to Lyme Time. I'm Allie from the Tick Chicks. We are all more than Lyme disease and chronic illness, and together we stand with you to overcome and rise. I'll bring you closer to the experts in cutting edge treatments and even a few unexpected ways of healing. I'll ask the questions you want answers to regarding Lyme disease and successful ways of getting you closer to 100%. We are in this together and will not be defined by Lyme. Today on Lyme Time, my special guest is Dan Bienenfeld, and he is the author of Align for Life, Journey to Structural Integration. Dan is a world-renowned Heller Work Structural Integration Trainer and practitioner with over 40 years of experience. He is past president of the Heller Work Practitioners Association and a senior training director of the Heller Work Program. Dan was co-founder of the Los Angeles Healing Arts Center, one of the nation's largest multi-specialty alternative medical centers. And prior to founding the center, Dan built a strong foundation for his work from many years of facilitating programs in structural integration oriented ergonomics for large corporate clients such as Johnson & Johnson. Dan's commitment as an author and a teacher ultimately springs from his deep passion and love for his work, which you will hear that passion in his voice and his desire to effect a positive healing transformation for as many people as possible in conjunction with his personal practice. Dan has been a practitioner for people like Martin Short and Jennifer Gray and Academy Award winner directors and all sorts of really special fun people here in Los Angeles over the years. He is a very special person, has a wonderful wonderful reputation and following out here in Los Angeles. And now thanks to virtual, he can uh, affect even more people worldwide. So welcome, Dan. Thank you so much. I love the introduction. (laughs) Well, it's all you. (laughs) Thank you. It's an honor to be on on your uh, podcast. Well, I also want to just add to your bio that you are my own personal practitioner. I have been to you. I have sent um, my children to you. And not only that, but I've worked with one of your uh, students. And that's how I got to know you um, because she left and went to start an incredible um journey herself and she lives in Australia now and I think a lot of my followers may know who that is that's Lauren Roxburgh and and she's she was wonderful and so when she left I said who am I going to see what am I going to do when you're gone she said I've got the person for you so that's how I came to know you and I have known about you uh, since I first moved to Los Angeles when I was I don't know 20 years old so 21 maybe so um Anyway, I'm just it's just an honor on so many levels to have you here. I feel like you're the guru of body work and um the true um it, it's like working with you may feel like oh, to a lot of people, well, he's a body work healer and and body work, but you heal so many different levels by just that deep fascia work. Um you have reversed your own scoliosis. You have reversed pain, intense pain in people, people that live with chronic pain, which is many of my listeners today. And you have not only reversed that, but also made their body more fluid than it ever had been before. And when when I say fluid, and you can go into this, um, you know, that is, that's something that we should all have is a very, very fluid body, a body free of reacting to circumstances that we're in a body that is released of trauma. And I just want to get into all of this with you. So first, let's just start with your own personal journey. What, what brought you to being uh, an author of this, a, a passionate follower of, of, of this type of work? Well, what brought me into this work was terrible, excruciating pain. And um, by the time I was, I think, 14, 13 or 14, I had severe scoliosis. So that's a curvature of the spine that's very uncomfortable. You know, you can see it in mild cases. Everyone has a little bit of twist. 
In my case, it was quite extreme and visually apparent. Um, and it was very, not only uncomfortable, but I was highly ashamed. You know, I was one of these kids that wore like long jackets and didn't want anyone to see my body because it was so distorted. And not only that, I also was a sick kid. I was chronically ill for about 13 years, um, which I know a lot of the listeners can relate to this. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, having a long standing um, fight with immunity is is a very expensive uh, pursuit, you know, financially, energetically, psychologically. Um, and I was no exception. So, you know, I grew up um, with these conditions. And um, one day I, um, you know, I, I led a normal life, but one day I noticed um, my girlfriend that she looked different. Her body looked like it had been sort of a short body type and suddenly she looked like a ballerina. And I didn't know what I was seeing. Like, I didn't think your body shape could change. Um, and naturally I was plagued with a body shape that was distorted. So when I saw what I saw, I said, what are you doing? And she told me about structural integration. She says it's possible to completely realign your body and put things where they actually belong. and no sooner than I heard it, I went and pursued this. And I found that my scoliosis actually corrected. And I grew about an inch and a half, um, which sounds great. And but that wasn't even the best. The best part is I was no longer ashamed of my of my body. And a lot of the things that had been stored within my body structure um, came out a lot of the um, the way that I processed feelings, emotions, as we know, are expressed through the body. And if we don't express them, then they stay in the body. Mm. And, um, I've, you know, over the years, I've found very little exception to that. In order for emotions to leave the body, they have to come out. They, they don't have to come out in any kind of big, grandiose way, but they have to be expressed they have to come out through movement, sometimes through the mouth, you know, speaking or upset. And a lot of us grow up with conditions where that's not possible. You know, trauma happens and um, pretty much everyone has some sort of trauma. I know that's a, a buzzword of the century here, but um, we can just think of it as trapped energy. And when energy gets trapped in the body, um, it's held in there by mental constructs. It's held in there by an energetic system that we're made of. And it's also held there by fascia. So when I went through this work and I felt the liberation, I it actually happened even before that I knew that I was gonna go into this work. Um, so it was one of the few things in my life that I was certain of that this is what I wanted to do. So. All through the years, I've had a practice and, you know, usually on the west side of Los Angeles. And right now I'm in Santa Monica, California, and I, I do clinical work with people and I also teach. So that's pretty much how I got here. And I, you know, it's been um, over four decades and I couldn't be more in love with it than I was when I started. That's an incredible, incredible story and journey and legacy, you know, I'm, you're, you're teaching actively. And this is something that I think people pick bits and pieces of healing. And, yes. you know, they kind of might start off with the Western version or some pharmaceuticals and all of that. And it may trickle down if you're lucky to just a bigger awareness. And maybe they try chiropractics and that's like a big step for a lot of people and and this is just above and beyond even chiropractics can you tell us a little bit about how structural integration is is different than what people normally associate with structural integration sure so so just to start with structural integration it's a it's a system or a method that um, methodically realigns the body structure and Dr. Ida Rolf was the founder of it. She was a fascia scientist, 
we'll talk about fascia in a moment. And she discovered that when you work on the body at in particular angles, at particular depth and speed, you can actually put things back where they belong. And when things are where they belong, the body works a lot better. When mm -hmm. things are not where they belong, it would be like blockages in pipes. And, you know, we, we think of physical reality. Um, there's a flow, you know, even in Chinese or Taoist traditions, there's feng shui, which is sort of the art of placement that energy moves through a system. And the way the that's, that the system is um, structured depends on how the energy flows through it. So when we want to have a, a very efficient system, we need for the body to be structured in a way that it allows the flow to come through. So realigning the body, um, working with the connective tissue, the fascia that holds everything in the body together, it goes through every um, cell pretty much. It's, it's a continuous membrane that connects and links everything. It's, it holds it together. It holds it apart. It lets fluids run through it. It's a communication system. It's like Wi-Fi. Um, it, it connects everything with everything else. And when we have blocks and rigidity and restriction in the body, the fascia becomes stagnant. It gets compartmentalized. Even in immune, immunological resources, um, when they get blocked by tight fascia, they can't get through the cells that are dead, the toxins that are trapped, they cannot, they can no longer flow and come out. The lymphatic system gets impaired. Mm -hmm. so the fascia, there's more to it than fascia, but fascia is a, is a important player in the um, immune, immune game. So having the fascia be clean, um, taking the toxins out, and this work really helps um, clear the fascia. We also have to, of course, be mindful of nutrition and what we're taking in from the environment and what we're taking in emotionally. So toxicity can get trapped through events in our lives. It can get trapped through conditions, jobs we do, toxic relationships, and our body tightens in reaction to these things. And then the, the fascia forms to the way we use it. So if I tighten my left shoulder all the time, um, because I'm reacting to being uncomfortable with someone in my atmosphere, in my midst, um, the fascia will actually shorten there, and then I'll have my shoulder be tight. This is an example of how the body will shape, you know, according to emotional conditions. Mm. So um, this work as far as the, what differentiates Heller work from regular structural integration is that um, Ida Rolf created the model of realigning the body. Um, Joseph Heller, the founder of Heller work, um, uh, realized that unless you work with the emotions and the content as you're working um, to, uh, to process it, and in a way it's like counseling that we do simultaneously. Um, the, the stressors and the traumas don't necessarily leave the body. They can even just get activated. So creating a space where we can actually discuss it, where we can do release work is part of the method. And the other part he noticed, um, that he created also a method of teaching movement, movement, the way we use our body, uh, determines how it shapes. So as I'm sitting here and all of you that are listening to this, just notice how you're sitting. Chances are you're sitting how you usually sit. Um, maybe you're sitting with more weight on one side of your hips. Um, go ahead and just check, hey, where is my weight? Um, and while we're at it, just find your sit bones. Bring your weight so that it's even on both sit bones. You'll notice the minute you do that, you get a little taller and mm -hmm. can come away from the back of the chair. So daily movements like sitting, standing, lifting, reaching, walking, um, we teach people how to do those things with great alignment and body awareness and how to identify when we're gripping and tightening so that the body can continually be a river 
the body has to have a flow. And if it doesn't, then we get sick and we get stuck. So the additions that Heller made to Rolfing um, were, were basically the psychological or the psychosomatic dialogue. We call it therapeutic dialogue and also the movement education. So let's get even more specific. So when I come in for a session with you, I lie down on a table and the lights are on. And so that's different than a regular massage, you know, a, a, a little different than chiropractor because I'm not, I'm not on any kind of adjustment machine. I'm just on a really nice, comfortable table. Okay. And then as you begin working with certain, I think you do, you do full body in the beginning just to kind of figure out where that tension is stored. But what's great and and you you don't even know what's happening actually dan's just sitting there making conversation with you and you're totally unaware and talking and you know sort of and and the whole time he's making conversation he's like moving your leg in different angles or your arm or your you know back or your neck and really what you're doing is you're having that conversation in order to feel if a, well, you tell me what, why, why do you talk during this? And what, what you called it a counseling type of um, right. therapy. How do you do that? What does that look like specifically? Well, there's a few ways that that works. One way it works is that as we work, sometimes emotions will come to the surface. Someone will get in touch with a deep sadness or a loss, or we'll be working on an area that's been rigidified that contains like pockets of anger from childhood or from something that happened that never resolved. And so as, as we get into those places, they're kind of like landmines. And when, you know, it's easy for me to notice and usually the client notices too, hey, something, I'm feeling something here. And then we go into it, you know, well, what are you, what are you experiencing right now? Um, uh, not so much to, to necessarily tell the whole story, because sometimes the story gets away from releasing it. We don't want to hold on too tightly to the story. But one way we work with the stuff that's held in the body is, is that we, we get somatic about it. We get body oriented, like what, do you, what are the sensations of that sadness you're feeling? Oh, it feels like a heavy feeling in my chest. Um, we actually go deeply into it. And when we go into it, the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, where it's actually stored, even though it's in the flesh, um, starts to discharge, it starts to release it. And then we, we've kind of let go of, of a certain level of something that happened years ago, mm -hmm. um, or a pattern that I've had my whole life. So sometimes it's chipping away at it, and sometimes it just lets go and that's it, it doesn't come back. So that's one form we happen to find it. Um, uh, the other form is that the way that this work is designed is that we've we've actually found parallels that each of the territories of sessions, we usually see people for a series of sessions. Usually there's the basic 10 or 11 sessions and each one works on a different area. And there are stereotypical things that are held in different parts of the body. Like in the third session, we work a lot on the shoulders and the arms um, and the side body. Mm -hmm. And typically in those areas, although it may not be so, usually there's a, a lot of aggression held there. There's like withheld anger. There's withheld, uh, I wish I would have done that and I didn't, or fear of reaching out and, and doing what we want to do or directing our life. So we don't impose that on people, but we listen for it. And if, if that's not there, something else is there. There's always something that's buried inside our tissue, mm -hmm. issues in the tissues, we like to say. <laughs> so and, we, and when something, when you stumble up upon something like that, whether it's repressed anger or guilt or shame or whatever it is, fear, then do you just, do you hone in on that area and just really start working that area? We do, um, but sometimes um, sometimes that could be a very long process. And, and because we also wanna 
architecturally change the body, we we kind of carry it through, we can carry that through a whole session. So, um, you know, we might work more on it if it's held. Sometimes an area isn't, doesn't have enough tone. It's, it almost didn't develop as it should have. Mm -hmm. And so working on it actually stimulates it to tone. We see that a lot as well. So yeah, we're working with it um, physically, um, psychologically, and energetically. Ener energetically, um, when I use this word, I'm always careful because some people think, oh, energetically, that's a woo-woo. But it's really a real thing. There's, there's, no, there's no doubt our body is an electromagnetic system. And when we don't have um, the proper um, radiance in certain parts of the body, it's sort of like the juice doesn't go there and it affects everything. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Can I give you an example? Yes, I'd love it. So um, right now, and, and I'd love for the listeners to do this, just um, sit, sitting quietly, tune into your left hand. So just, you can close your eyes, tune into your left hand and just feel the sensations in the left hand. And this is an example of just honing in on an area. As you, as you tune into the hand, take a breath into that area as if you could breathe right into your left hand. Now, as you focus on it, it's going to wake up the sensations there. You might feel that there's a little bit of a spotlight on that left hand. In fact, just imagine that there's a luminous, radiant light shining into that hand. People don't realize that fascia activates, is activated by light. It's activated by focus. So when you bring your consciousness there, it actually opens the tissue. As you're imagining the fascia opening there, go ahead and, and let out a little sound like a mm, make a little sound and focus on sending the sound into that hand. As you do that, sound sound waves in the body actually open up the fascia. So the goal here is to activate the fascia so that it can properly create flow in the body. And the other thing that activate, these are all scientifically um, uh, verifiable. The other thing is gently shake the hand, sort of shake the hand out, just gently letting the elbow go, letting the shoulder go. So you're breathing into the hand, you're sending sound there, you're sending light there, you're sending your focus there. Why not throw in a little bit sending of loving, lovingness there? When we send love to the places that, that hurt, we actually get healing there. So we're just using your hand as an example. Now go ahead and just move the hand around if you want to open your eyes and look at the screen, you can kind of look at my hand. Just move the hand in sort of a conscious, slow way, just feeling, sensing it. And now take the right hand and just tap your left hand. Just tap it. That gives us the felt sense of the hand from the outside. And now put your hands in your lap. Put both hands in the lap. And now just feel your left hand, feel the sensations and compare it to the sensations in the right hand. See if you notice a difference between the sensations in the right and the left hand. So typically people will feel, hey, my left hand feels more alive or it feels, now just move both hands and you might even feel a difference in how the hands are moving. I, I definitely do. It feels lighter. Yeah. Is there is there more fluidity there? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And that hap that can happen very quickly. Um, this is a technique I call the fascia integration technique. Um, and we can do that all through the whole body. I just wanted to pick the hand so you could feel. But this is an example of the resources going uh, into the hand that maybe weren't going there before. So, so... <laughs> 
anyone who's had chronic illness or or aches and pains or inflammation needs these techniques to go into the body, focus in, and it actually activates and opens up the all the vessels going there. Um, even the temperature of the hand will be higher on that side. This is how I knew uh, what you do works 100% because even just with probably we were halfway through a session and I compared the two sides of my body and it felt like somebody had a spigot in my body and that all of this weight and all of this fluid and all, it felt like a completely different body than on the other side of my body. Yes. And I just don't ever find that immediate release in any other sort of body work for me. Uh, and it was, it's just, it's just so wonderful. And I mean, your book, let's talk about the book for a second, Align for Life, Journey to Structural Integration. It actually has, most of the book is so packed full of actual specific exercises and things you can do on your own, or even maybe with a partner. I know you, we'll talk about that later, but but it's just incredible. The I, I'm the daughter of a kinesiologist, so maybe this is why I'm nerding out on it. But, okay. but to have this handy book explaining why you do these very, very simple exercises that you can do in the comfort of your own home. You talk about how your body shows your complete personality you know, upon meeting someone, you can, you talk about the way you carry your body. You talk about different bodies that you can try on. I love, you talk about your fearful, vulnerable self. You have a confident self. You have a critical self. You have a sexy and seductive self. It, th this book is just, it's so easy to read yet. It's so full of really, really practical information. And just if, if people are disassociating from their body, which happens a lot with Lyme disease, I think that Lyme disease, just my own experience, is that is trauma in and of itself. You may not think back to your childhood and say, oh, you know, I did, I, I really didn't have those, those big, big traumatic experiences that many people do, unfortunately. But having had a bacteria invade your body and systemically break down every single functioning part of your body from organs to tissues to bones to brain function to severe nerve pain and central nervous system issues it is one of the most painful things i've ever been through and an unexplained pain, it doesn't really automatically show up in blood work. So you also feel crazy on top of that, talking to all your doctors until you finally get diagnosed. So, um, so I, I really believe in fascia work because upon getting Lyme disease or tick-borne illness, what I noticed was one of my first indicators was my fascia which I didn't know was my fascia, but I said, it feels like everything under my skin is constricting in this right. way. And this is what happened to me. I couldn't, I could no longer, you know, lean against a wall and stretch out my calf muscles. My calf muscles were so tight. My shoulders were so tight. My neck was so tight. And I had this, but it wasn't just one area of my body. It felt like everything was shrinking and constricting in such a way. And that in and of itself caused pain, which causes that initial trauma. Then you can go do different therapies and get over your quote unquote bacterial load. But what you're stuck with for many, many, many years until you release it consciously is this traumatic experience that is is overriding every organ of your body and it's it's awful and so you feel better on one hand but you still you're still a prisoner of your own body so i just wanted to throw that in there because you know it's it's not just sort of like it's not just only breath work and it's not only 
one thing or another. Your work really takes it all into consideration and you have different courses um, that we'll talk about. Well, we, we can talk about them now because I'm sure people will be wondering how on earth they're gonna do work with you from Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about what you provide and what those different things look like? Uh, sure. Um, thank you. You know, that was brilliant what you said. Um, before I before I say that, I just want to, um, I mean, before I get into what my offerings, um, to me, what you're talking about is embodiment. And I know that anyone who's had chronic inflammation or chronic illness, um, including Lyme, and I've had hundreds of Lyme patients, um, there's a disassociation as you described. And I wanna just blanketly say, in order to, to heal, you have to come back into your body. I've never seen anyone heal and recover and become functional who was not able before, um, who who didn't have to go through the process of coming back into the body. It's a a painful body is not a place we want to live in, and and yet we have to go in in order to come out. Um, and when we go in, it it actually helps open the fascia and open the tissue. And, and it's almost like um, telling the body, you know what, I'm, I'm reinvesting in you. I'm coming back into you. I know I left because it was too uncomfortable, but the body will not heal until we come back. And yes, it there's many modalities. And I will also say it takes a village. There's no one modality. As you know, people can do this thing in it. But somehow we find a way to heal and a lot of it can be even internal with our, you know, our process by ourselves through coming to terms and accepting. Some of it's through fighting. Um, anyway, I, I got a little off your original question, but I just wanted to applaud you for recognizing the embodiment factor. Right. And, and the disassociation, many Lyme patients, and I went through this phase myself where you're completely just lodged from your body. I went into a, a grocery store one time and then I stood there and I knew where I was, but I didn't know why I was there. And I forgot. And, and I walked around as though I had dementia and it was a very, very scary feeling. And I just went back into my car and I sat there and it, it you know, it, it passed, but that's the kind of thing where we, you know, you're talking about uh, this particular bacteria getting into brain tissue and whatnot. You you start being really angry with your body and your mind and your spirit, and so it just it just you you take a departure from your body, and like you say, eventually you have to come back to it. You have to thank it <laughs> for surviving. And that's supporting love, you, love, I mean, you know, love it. absolutely. And so, and so you, in your book, you talk a lot about like, um, working, this is the type of work it's hands-on physical work. Like I said, he, the, the hands are, are, he's manipulating your body and almost like digging in to that fascia that's underneath like sometimes it's not actually comfortable you have to breathe really deeply through it it's not um, a comfortable feeling because he's going so deep into the belly um your guts your abdomen you know um even your you know i'm sure your kidneys and your lower back so this is a kind of work that it yeah. takes to unlock this at the same time talking about um talking about life and and you're, you're not even necessarily talking about your feelings. It's not as deep as a therapy session. It's just brushing the surface of different things that could come up for you. But, but the question was, was uh, how would people work with you? What do you offer in terms of uh, long distance teaching and whatnot? Right. Um, thank you. Um, I, 
I offer, of course, in-person sessions um, at my office in uh, Santa Monica, California. Um, and I do also trainings for professionals who want to learn how to do this technique. I offer um, courses in posture that I can do either live or on Zoom. Um, I offer, I have a whole platform that's going to be starting in the next few months. It's called Embody 365. Embody 365 is, is a daily offering that helps you kind of come back into your body. And it's practices you can do in like three to five minutes. Um, so that's coming. And so uh, I do have a website that I can recommend you go to. And if there's nothing, if it's not up there yet, it will be shortly um, called embody365.com or danbienenfeld.com. Either way gets you to the same place. Oh, that's wonderful. And also, um, when do you, do you offer cl classes or courses online? Uh, uh, the I noticed something on your website about the journey um, classes. Oh yes, um, that particular one is more oriented towards um, professionals, like people wanting to learn how to become practitioners of this work. Um, and I have courses that I'm about to launch um, for general public. So they're just not on the website yet. That's very exciting. That's, that's I, I think for people to, for you to come into people's homes on a daily basis is going to be incredible for everyone. Very excited about it, yeah. And um, I guess, I mean, I just am just, would like to wrap it up by talking about somatic dialogue and how you work with that in terms of healing the body. Um, for instance, Lyme disease, people that are listening to this, they're thinking, how can this possibly help me with a bacteria that's invaded my body? Right. They, they may not understand how it all sort of works together, but if they found a practitioner in their area, for instance, what would what should they look for when they're interviewing somebody or curious to know if they're going to get as good of a treatment as maybe you would provide? I think there's always a bell ringing when we're in the right place. Um, you know, a feeling of this is the right place for me. But I will also say that I know with this population, um, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of false prophets, there's a lot of charlatans and a lot of people trying to sell, um, I'm gonna cure your thing. And so I am I know I say that with caution because all that glitters is not gold, but there has to be an intrinsic feeling like this is a safe place for me to process my body, my feelings. This is a place where I can heal, you know, beyond getting fixed. It's really about healing because you know, um, coming coming back from from this type of a situation with the microorganisms, um, you know, there's usually depression. Those kinds of feelings make it hard to to gain enough energy. There has to be a way to move through it into a um, uh, into a positive in a positivity. And once there's positivity, there's a lot more progress. But that's a big step. So sometimes that big step takes a lot of little steps. So I would look for things that help elevate me to a feeling like um, in my attitude that I can actually work with this and I can support myself in loving myself through this. I think the feeling of loving myself is, is the main motor. And I know that Sometimes these long-term things, these long-term illnesses will, will jab away at the self-loving. So anything to build that up, I think that has to come first. Yeah. yeah. You're absolutely right. And, and just the willingness to try something out of the box and yes. to pick up the phone and maybe research somebody in their area that they can go to in person or, you know, make the trip out to see you. And certainly, certainly try, sign up for your new program, which would provide them with daily um, 
daily one-on-one, -on -one, just little bits. I mean, that's how you chip, chip away at these, at the somatic retraining of the brain and the body is just little bits, little reminders in the morning, uh, to realign your, your, not only your body, but your mind. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, I learned so much. Yeah. Again, I want to reiterate, oh, and they can buy your book where online. Uh, on at my website or Amazon. Okay, yes. this is what it looks like, everybody. Yes. Mind for Life Journey to Structural Integration. It is, it's just, it should be on everybody's bookshelf. And it would be great, you know, to to just raise children and the next generation with with consciousness of how they hold their body and how they move their body. And I think everybody on this planet could could benefit from creating a more fluid body, more fluid thoughts, a less reactive way of thinking and acting and holding your your body and reimagining how you react to trauma. There is a way to handle conflict with relaxed consciousness, as you would say, and awareness. And that's that's what the world needs a little bit more of right now. And it it really it helps you heal and become that fully realized human being. And that's why we're all on this planet. So, so thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. I'll be seeing you soon in your office. Yeah. I really <laughs> appreciate you having me and we need more people like you in the world, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you soon. Okay. All right. well. Bye.